Hello to you and thank you for watching my video. As always, please like and subscribe and if you have any questions or would like me to cover something in greater depth or cover something I have not, please put it into the comments. Today I'm going to go over how to use and as well as explain the IP request feature. The IP request feature enables your end users like dev test users or engineering staff to request an IP address reservation from the PHP IPAM administrators as well as helps create a record trail for why an IP address has been reserved. To begin, let's go to the server settings in PHP IPAM and ensure that we already have enabled the IP request module and that it is set to on. If it's not set to on, please turn it on and select save. Now, let's look at our some subnets. Now I've created a test subnet for this and what you're seeing here is under this, I have three subnets and there's a request feature here. If the, PA, if the feature module isn't enabled, this is not going to show up. If I go into the user engineering subnet and let me delete these. And could it just deleted all of them? So it's nice and clean. So in here, if I go to the pencil, you'll see the IP request feature and the show name feature. Now, this relates to later on in the IP request field, you'll see the name. If I don't select this, the name won't show up in the IP requests. So what I'm going to do is turn it on for these three subnets. But it's, that's a lot of work, right? Let's say I had 50 subnets. So what I want to do here is because I have all of these subnets have a name, user QE, user um, test servers, so on and so forth. What I can actually do is I can select that and because all of them have a name or this field is filled out, from what I can see, I should be able to just propagate it. And now they all are enabled. And that's really good. And if I go and create, let's say, another set of subnets, let's say I'll make it 2.24, right? And you can see these. this is already propagating. If I hit add, it's probably going to give me an error, which it did. So I need to put a description here. So we'll call this um, user oops, dash eng. Okay. And let me copy that. I don't, I don't like to type. <laughs> and so now in here, what I want to do is create two nested networks, right? Um, as you can see, this is like this. If I try to hit add, it's going to give me an error message. So I'm going to do one. And I'll do one more, but I'll make that two. But I'm not going to show, or actually, I'm sorry. I'm not going to put a description. I'm not going to show the name. And we need to remember 2.128. And because I disabled the show name feature, it's going to work. Now, the next half of this is actually showing you the IP request feature. And so I'm going to request it. Now, as you remember, I should have, see, this one has no name, 2.128. The 2.0 was user engineering one. These are some of the other ones created. And then I have these, right? So pretty straightforward. 
now I'm going to show you how to actually make a request. To make the request, we have several required fields. We have the select the subnet, and this is where the request will be placed, and then who the requester is, and that's their email address. So in order to do this, we need to obviously give it a, the IP a description. So I usually call it something like, you know, the name of the server. So I'm going to call this E118 because this is engineering. Um, if I give it a host name, this is its, you know, host name for the system. And then you can put in the MAC address if you know your, but it, ha it has to be the true MAC address. It gets a little funky. Um, who's responsible for this? I'm going to just say it's Tom. And then uh, the user is T Jones at the tech guys got local. And then down here, I usually re we encourage our users to request an IP. And the reason for that is what will generally happen is it's the first available IP. Sometimes that's not good. Um, so if you have a subnet like this, the very first IP it's going to request is number one. Now, if they're not familiar with the subnet, this could be a problem, but what I'll do is I'll type requesting IP address. Now, what is this? 1, 10, that's a full 24, yeah, so 99. And I will submit the request. And it clears. Now I could have reset that, but I did, I know I submitted it. And what happens when you send that is the administrator, IPAM administrator, gets the uh, email and the request and the name of the server and who requested it and all that. And so now let's go back to our server and hopefully there's now an email. So this, this little email is representing one request for IP address waiting for your approval. So if I go in here and I look it up, this is what T. Jones requested, the device and everything, and it says he wants IP 99. Now I can actually edit this and select 99. I can put in a ticket number, let's say 999, that this was approved, and hit accept. Now I do have the option to reject, and I can just cancel and maybe reflect on this. But the um, the purpose here is to give a control on um, this setting. So I'm going to go ahead and approve it or accept it. And the another email will be sent out. And let me grab that. And it will look something like this. And it will say that your IP address has been requested. If I had re you know, denied it, it would say rejected here and say that hit this and it would say a comment as to why I rejected it. So now that those two pieces have been done, you can see this cleared out. The email went away. And if I go to my company and I look at the folder here, I believe that was in here, we requested it. And there it is. <laughs> It shows that it was changed to 99 or 99, that it was um, Tom who requested it and, you know, the host name and all of these good pieces and parts. Um, there were no notes, but you could have, I could have put notes in there and well, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope this made understanding how to use the IP request feature a little clearer. Um, finally, I wanted to thank you for watching my video, and as always, please like and subscribe and add some comments of what you liked or what else you would like me to cover. 
Remember, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you.